Well, James, you know, Frank seems to think Liverpool. You and I at the start of the season thought Liverpool. Yes, uh, we can, did indeed. Yes, can they do it? My own opinion is exactly the same as Frank's, and I think he summed it up very well. Well done, Frank. Don't ask for a job <laughs> here, will you? It's, it's yeah. no burden. Burden yeah. to them, yeah. to Liverpool. Everybody else, we've seen Arsenal. They've 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 dropped effectively 12 points in their last six games, mm -hmm. and and teams when they get there seem to suffer from nerves, from this little bit of edginess. Whereas Liverpool don't. They love to be in front. They take it in their stride. Mm -hmm. It is no burden to them. I think that they will probably win it. Well, Norwich, full enough of the teams that are in there. Norwich have, you know. If they win their games in hand, they go above the Yes, arc. they do indeed. In actual fact, I mean, they are the main danger yes. now, if you look at it logically. But, uh -huh. but the thing with Norwich is they've never been up, up, up in front, have uh -huh. they yet? They haven't actually been on top. Uh -huh. And it'll be interesting to see how they... They've always been chasing, yes. chasing, chasing. Uh -huh. be actually interesting to if see Norwich on top yeah. and how they handle it. Right. But you know that Liverpool are going to be there, don't uh -huh. you? You just know well, it. Now, Forrest, funnily enough, were one of the teams who were in contention but have sort of slipped out of it. Yeah, they, they lost have. in midweek uh, against Tottenham. In fact, Tottenham are, are coming pretty good, Jim, since uh, the time yeah, of the year. Yeah, they're playing well now. This was a good ball back by Stevie Hodge for young Parker to score, wasn't it? Uh -huh. I think Forrest have had such an outstanding season in the Cups that they're bound to slip a little bit, and I think this could be a bit of a reaction uh, to... Spurs beating them in in many ways it was inevitable wasn't it that they had to lose they've been going for so well and that was how scoring and let's face it Tottenham are coming into their own uh, we all thought that Tottenham were going to be a bigger threat this year than yes, probably they have been uh -huh. so they're entitled to win a few and this one's knocked in by Vinny Samways right. so Forrest yeah out of the game but not out of the cups are they they've got two possibly three so it's been a hell of a season for them marvellous season for them right we'll take a break in part two we've the result of last week's competition and another one to set we hear from John Frankham hopefully down at Kempton Park and we've some terrific Scottish Cup action we'll be right back Welcome back. And we start part two with a look at Chelsea, who are careering back to the first division in some style. The last three games have all been away from home and none of them have been easy, but three wins out of three has left them as favourites for the second division title. 40,000 watched last Saturday's clash at Main Road. Tony McLaughlin also brings height to the Chelsea set pieces. Dibble is impeded. And the goal counts, and it's Kerry Dixon's. A scrambled affair when Andy Dibble didn't get there at the near post. Roberts. Oh, they followed through on Morley then. Accepted in good part. And Dixon, as he got away from Gailey, has. It's Wilson in the centre, 2-0 to Chelsea. Possessed, and it's an amazing break by Chelsea. And Tony DiRigo, who goes round Dibble and finishes it all in style. And Chelsea, having been under the collar for the last 10 minutes or so, have broken the length of the field to go three up and surely quell the Manchester City fire. of Roberts. Penalty. There was there some holding initially by Roberts as uh, McLaughlin went across. He clearly played the ball. McNabb then against Besson. And he sends him the wrong way. It's back to 3-1. For the last long throw for Manchester City. And Molden, and surely a goal for Taggart. Hmm, good stuff. Yeah, they Actually, doing well, James. they are, in, I'm, you know particularly proud to have played for them all those years ago, <laughs> Saint, long time ago. But it would be nice uh, to see them come up because they are a big club. 
They deserve to be in the first division, Chelsea. Uh -huh. As do, may I say, Manchester City, really. Yes. You've got, two yes. For, you've got two first division sides there, haven't you, really? Yeah. 40,000 people, uh, two, two sides like that. And, you know, I hope if Chelsea get up that they can develop their ground and and maintain their status in the first division yeah. because they've been up and down like yo-yos of late, you know. And I but would they, think all credit to Bobby Campbell who, who took over there when things were bad and they were, yeah. you know, were slipping down, the crowds had gone, you know, and he's resurrected them and, uh, you yeah. know, I think he's done a good job. Well, they've done very well. I, I wish both, both clubs good luck because they both be, yeah. deserve to be in the top top stuff. Right, Jim. Now, the Scottish Cup quarterfinals fell foul of the weather last week, as I found out to my cost. I went all the way to Glasgow for the Rangers, the DNA tie, only to find it rained off. But all four games have been played at least once, and here is the action for you. Crucial lead that. He was the man who provided it, Mark McGee, and that for the penalty kick. It's Aiken against Henry Smith. 2 0 to Celtic. Eight minutes from half time. A smile on the face of the Celtic captain, Roy Aiken tells all. Bannon certainly has ability to swerve free kicks from this position. Man Celtic wall. There goes Bannon. Beautifully struck by Bannon, and suddenly hearts are right back in the match. Now, that game, Jim, grabbed all the headlines for the wrong reasons. Young Alan McLaren here got booked for. And you can see the referee's got the yellow card down, yeah. and then the lad said something, and he gets a red card. Yeah. Now, he's got to learn, Jim, that that is nonsense. Well, he will develop a reputation, and we all know what referees are. And here, coming up, is a bit of a shambles, Ian. Well, this it? was a Tosh yes. McKinley tackle that, yeah. that sparked off this little bit of a boxing match. Yes, well, this is a bit like the old rugger, isn't it? You know, <laughs> it everybody was, well, in there. Yes. Wheels, wheels anyway. Anyway. But actually, it's very interesting to notice that the referee had sorted his two men out very, very quickly in this incident. He left the rest of the players to argue amongst themselves, but he actually nailed what I think was probably the right two. Whether the Celtic lads think that he was doing an evening up score or not, I'm not quite sure. Well, I but, think that uh, was the case when Mick McCarthy yeah. got it took. Now, the Hibs were expected to hammer Alloa. Well, they didn't. They won by this Paul Kane goal, and that puts them through to meet Celtic in the semi finals. Yep. Picking out Krivogovic with a fine pass. Yes, Tarak. Krivogovic is onside. Good move from United. Ray Wilkins. Now oh, Walters again. He has to take on Malpass and Patalainen. Well, the cross goes in! Great goal for Rangers! Wilkins to Monroe. Playing it through for Wilkins. For Coist! Being very careful with the tackle inside the box. Now it's with Irvin. Good disguise play, a fine cross. The header by Patalainen. Ten minutes from the end, Patalainen brings United back on level terms. And across by Johnston, there's Alexander now for Morton. Chase on now for Spencer. Very quick over the ground with Barron chasing. Spencer's cross. Good play by Grant. Yeah! And a superb goal from St Johnston. Roddy Grant 
saves the village. Right the corner kick. Balovic can't reach it. It's in the spine. And it hold by Dougie Robertson. Well, a good Scottish cup package, good actually. Stuff. Good goals. Excellent. Great goals. Really enjoyable. Yeah. Yes, it certainly it really was. was. Mm. Now, while that was on, we've had some calls from Anglia to say, That's James, right. that Norwich City have been top of the league yes. this season. Yes, I appreciate that fellow Anglians, because I come from Anglia myself. Uh, but what I was trying to say is, at this time of the season, when there's only a few games to play, it's going to be interesting to see how they react then, when they get on top, as to whether they can actually do it like the Liverpools of this world. So, I want to see Norwich win the same as you, Anglians. Ow. Right. Wow. Now, to our Little Wiz Cup competition, which offers a day out for two people at the Little Wiz Cup final on April the 9th. Now, that includes tickets to to the match between Luton Town and Nottingham Forest at Wembley and lunch beforehand at the Ladbroke Hilton Hotel. Now last week we showed you goals from the 1972, 76 and 1980 finals and asked you to name the winning captains. Well the answers were in 1972 Peter Dobing of Stoke City. Now that one caught a few people out. In 1976 it was Mike Doyle of Manchester City and their win over Newcastle. And in 1980, it was Emlyn Hughes, the superstar of Sporting Triangles, the year that Nottingham Forest went down 1-0 to Wolves. So there you are. That was hard. The lovable Emlyn as well there, you know, the man who can prove that you can fool all of the people all of the time. Right. <laughs> Right, and the winner that we picked out, in fact, was a young lady, Tracy Latimer of Farnborough in Hampshire. So tickets and details will be on their way to you very shortly, Tracy. Now, if you were unlucky this time, have another go in this week's competition, which offers the same prize a day out at the Little Wiz Cup final. Now, here come three more goals, but this time we do want to know the scorers' names and we also want the common link between them. Who were the goal scorers and what is the common link between them? Answers, please, in a postcard to St. and Greavesy, Littlewoods Cup competition, LWT London, SC 996YW. That's St. and Greavesy, Littlewoods Cup competition, LWT, that's the South Bank Centre, London, SC 996YW. And you'll also meet Tracy Latimer when you're there as well. Right. <laughs> now, to